Hi, hello, welcome back. My name is Devraj. Welcome back to this series about bioenergetics and related body-based therapy, body-based stuff. Um, today I want to look at tobacco, shamanic tobacco, because uh, I did a video about a shamanic shaking technique I learned from uh, an energy master in Bali. And uh, I mentioned that I would do a, a follow-up about tobacco. This, this chap also used tobacco as a shamanic tool. And uh, a lot of people are asking me, where's the tobacco video? So here is the tobacco video. Let me just get it a little bit straighter, hopefully. Okay, so uh, how to approach this? I'm gonna, we're gonna look here. Let's, let's have some tobacco. Here is some shamanic tobacco. And by that, you know, it doesn't need to be a super spiritual thing. Let's just kind of, uh, I don't wanna spill it all over the floor just now. But you can see, it's just regular loose tobacco. This is from Bali, actually. In fact, I've had it uh, probably about five years. I never really use it anymore. And I was surprised to find it sitting in the bottom of an old box. But it is still uh, active and, and useful. It's, it keeps for years. It loses its kind of moisture. But, you know, assuming you can't get your hands, you don't need to, uh, what I'm trying to say is, you don't need to really, in my opinion, get some super special tobacco from the rainforest or Peru, somewhere like that. You just want to find a tobacco that is relatively, uh, you know, untainted by too many chemicals. You know, I remember years ago when I used to, to, to smoke tobacco, you know, cigarettes and stuff when I was young, you know, they used to say that Marlboro had like 3,000 additives and obviously if you want to use tobacco for a cleansing or, uh, you know, healing purpose, essentially, then you don't want to use that kind of tobacco. But in the UK, you can find a tobacco called Natural American Spirit. I think it's pretty popular across Europe or America. I've also used at times things like Golden Virginia, probably has got a few additives. But I know that Natural American Spirit is famous for not having additives. So I've used that in the past and I think it's fine. Just make sure you haven't got anything that's too that's too tainted by stuff, basically by, by, by chemicals, you know, to addict you. And um, what we're going to look at today is three different ways that you can use this tobacco. Three different ways. Two of which I learned with Ratu, uh, which I, you know, I saw the Ratu people doing, which were popular around the ashram there. And one of which, which I um, uh, picked up from an ayahuasca shaman. Uh, and those three ways essentially are, uh, first one, which I learned from Ratu, was, is putting some in your mouth into a specific part of your mouth. In fact, before I go to that, before I go to that, I'm going to say that what's important, still a bit lopsided here, what's important when you use tobacco, especially when you use it uh, as putting it in your mouth, raw, or using the syringe to syringe it up your nostril and mouth, which we'll look at in a moment, is that when you do that, after you do that, you need to shake or engage yourself physically in some kind of practice. You know, that's very important. And by shaking, what I mean is like, um, essentially, it's a kind of um, a release shaking. You know, sometimes when I'm leading a workshop with a lot of shaking in it, or I'm getting people to shake at the end of a session, they kind of hurl themselves around from side to side. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. It's not going to do you any harm. But when you're shaking to bring up energy in your body and heal and clear, you shake vertically. You shake vertically. What you do is you kind of feel into your legs, especially around your knees, and you just see if it's like a natural shake there, or you kind of fake it till you make it, but it's a little vertical shake. You keep breathing through the mouth nice and deep, particularly the out breaths deep through the mouth. You feel your body and you let your head go. Sometimes I see people shaking, you know, and they're shaking like their body's moving, but their head's locked rigid. It's not gonna give you very much, particularly when you take tobacco because you're ingesting through the mouth, through the head, and you want it to get into the rest of your body. You don't want to lock the throat and hold it in your mind. So you've got to let your head go when you shake it. It's got to be. <sighs> really this, this release let go from your mouth. This is very important. This is very important. Okay, so having gone into that, let's look at the first way I learned from the Radu school. And that is to take some of the tobacco, like a little wedge of it, this is way too dry to really do this with. And basically you put it, God, I don't want to get it all over the floor. You put it specifically between your lower lip and your teeth. There's a little wedge up. In there. So you can see it in there. And you know, if you want, you can just go about your day keeping that in there. You know, I've got a little bit too much and it's affecting how I speak. 
but you can do that but it's much better really to um you know use it as a shaking aid some people i know really got into the tobacco like that uh i never really got into the tobacco like that i preferred syringe just take that bit out yeah yeah i need a bit of tissue Wow, that stuff is old. <laughs> you don't want to use tobacco like that really in your mouth. I mean, of course it will, uh, it'll soften up, but it, it gets so kind of hard after a while. Okay, the second way we're going to look at using tobacco also came from the Radu Bagas tradition. And this is the first way I was exposed to this. It's about literally 15 years ago, back in 2004, I remember it, in the summertime. Uh, Ratu, you know, this, this Balinese shaman uh, came over to the centre where I was living. And I'm, I'm actually here now and I'm, I'm here two days a week still. And he was leading his workshop, you know, for about 100 people. And what you really do is you just shake. You shake for like three hours at a time, two to three hours at a time, three times a day. It's pretty intense. He's just shaking, shaking away. He comes around and does energy work. And what I noticed, uh, I wasn't in the workshop. I was just living in the centre, was that every now and again, like uh, this short Balinese woman, Sukri, would come out with a big thing of tobacco liquid and squirt it. Other people would come out of the shaking space in Marquis and line up and like get a shot of this through the nose and one through the mouth. And I saw them doing this. I was just in the, in the main house and I saw them and I thought, what the fuck are these guys up to? You know, this, is, this, is, this looks weird. You know, this looks uh, exciting. You know, squirting tobacco up people. They'd kind of have their head back and they'd get a squirt and they'd do this little shaking. And you could see something was really happening for them. So I thought, Hey, whatever, you know, oh, fuck it, I'll just go and I'll go and join the queue and see if I get some tobacco as well. So I joined the queue and uh, she gave me one shot up one nostril, one up the other and then one in the mouth. And then I actually had to go back to work and go to a meeting. And, I, and it was a bit, bit of a disaster because my brain was like exploding and I needed to, to express and move my body. But uh, that was my first exposure to tobacco. And after that, I got quite strongly into it. But the main form that I used a lot was the liquid. And to make the liquid, all you really do, essentially here's some I made earlier, as I used to say on kids TV, you get a wadge of tobacco. You don't need so much. You know, if you've got like, if you had like a 12 and a half gram pouch, uh, you know, you could use something like that, like a fifth of a pouch, something like that, and put it in a little bit of water, like just a few mil of water. It doesn't need much. And then leave it for like five, 10 minutes. And you can leave it longer if you want. But five, 10 minutes is about, you know, is enough to get the energy into the liquid. And then you can either strain it off. And if you're keeping it for a while, by the way, you need to chill it. You know, you need to chill it or it'll, it goes kind of grungy. I used to quite like it grungy, but you need to chill it really. And then what you do is you get a syringe. You need like a small syringe, like a five mil syringe uh, without the needle, uh, for obvious reasons, hopefully. And you take about like a mil, half a mil to a mil in the syringe like this. And you place it quite, you've got to be a little bit careful because on an energetic level, it's supposed to be going up into your energy body and up through channels around here. So it should go in the top part of the nose. And you give a quick squirt, put your head back a little bit and go, whoa. Ah. Ah. And then you do the other nostril. Don't just do one and give up because it'll be unbalanced. Ah. And then to finish off, have a bit of tissue handy. Finish off, you open your mouth and squirt one right in the back there. Ah. Mm. Ah. And when you've done that, give yourself a shake, you know. And breathe and feel, really don't hold in, you know. Like, ah. Aye. Wow, just like the old days. You need to really shake it out. So, you know, it's good if you're going into some kind of physical practice after taking tobacco, not just like sitting down and being on your computer. It wouldn't be really so great for you. The final way that I learned about taking tobacco came from a uh, ayahuasca shaman or a, a vegetalista. And um, essentially it's, it's, it's kind of similar, but all you do is you take your tobacco and you need a, a bigger chunk of it really. And you mix it with more water, like a little glass like this. This is like a 150 mil glass. You probably have about that much, like, you know, 80 to 100 mils, 80 to 100 mil of water in there, you know, a tenth of a litre. And you mix a good chunk of tobacco, like you could even use like half of a 12 and a half gram pouch, something like that. 
and you mix it in there and you leave it. You don't need to heat it or anything, just cold water. You put cold water in there for like, leave it for maybe 10 to 30 minutes. 30 minutes, half an hour is fine. And then strain it. Strain it squeezing for tobacco out as well so you get all the juice. So it's just liquid and you don't have any more bits of tobacco in there. Okay, half an hour will be absolutely fine. And then you sit down and you just drink it. It's not particularly tasty, so it's not terrible either, but you just drink it and you let it go, you know, really feel it into your body. And this one is not so much, you can do some gentle movement on it, but it's more you sit down or lie down and let it come into your system. It's got quite a powerful grounding effect. It's quite a powerful grounding effect, I find. And it will last, you know, it maybe take 20, 30 minutes for you to feel anything. And then it will, it's not really psychoactive, but your body feels different. Often if you listen to music, it, it affects you more deeply. You know, you can really feel into it. It helps you feel your body more, essentially. That's how I see it. And, you know, it's, I, I used to take it kind of late in the evening, like six, seven o'clock at night. And then I'd have a, quite a powerful dreams in the night as well and stuff like that. It's a shamanic substance, basically. If you are doing this, make sure you don't eat anything for at least five or six hours minimum before. You know, I used to eat at one and then maybe take the tobacco around seven. You know, and if you can, if you can wait longer, that'll make it stronger still. So those are three ways that you can take the tobacco raw in here uh, with a syringe of the liquid or drinking the liquid, you know. And uh, let's just give a little bit of background about why. I mean, I probably should have said this at the beginning, but why people use tobacco. But, and uh, whilst I, I came into contact with it in South Asia, in Bali, basically in Indonesia, you know, you'll find it a lot in South America. I've never actually been to South America, but vegetalistas say that, uh, that, that you know, the kind of medicine men and medicine women, cureros from there, they say that one of its uses originally was, they call it the grandfather plant, you know, and that it contains a phenomenal amount of light. You know, when tobacco grows, it absorbs apparently more light than any other plant. That's what I heard. Don't complain too much if you're a super scientist. I heard that. And it makes sense to me. And then when you ingest it, you know, this light is more inside your system and it's easier to see and feel where the blocks are, basically. Easier to feel more deeply into your body when you take it. And one story about this plant, about the grandfather plant, as they called it, was that uh, originally the tribes people in Peru or in South America, other parts of South America, they took tobacco, you know, they, they consumed tobacco and tobacco, the kind of spirit of tobacco, told them how to make the grandmother drink, which is ayahuasca, which is more psychoactive, you know, because if you've ever made ayahuasca or you've, you've taken it, you know, it's quite complicated to make it, you know, it's not sort of thing you'd just be trolling about, you know, a few thousand years ago in the uh, South American jungle, oh, well, I'll take a bit of this, you know, it's quite a complex process using different substances that you use to get the, to, 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 to create ayahuasca. And the story is that it came down to man from the tobacco plant, the abuelo, and then, and then they taught you how to make the abuela, the grandmother plant, or grandmother potion, ayahuasca. I find tobacco interesting stuff. I don't take it so much these days. When I was younger, I was always more into substances. I started with recreational drugs, as you do in my teens and 20s, and then at some point come out of that and started to use, you know, more kind of progressive, positive sort of drugs and stuff like that. But I'm not really into the tobacco anymore, but I think it's an interesting stuff and uh, hopefully you'll find it uh, useful. One or other one other thing to mention, of course, you know, it's got nicotine in it, you know. So, uh, uh, you know, if you have a history of issues around tobacco, you know, like you used to be addicted to smoking and you got off, maybe it's not such a good idea to take it. You can try and see. Some people say that it helps them get off you know, to taking it orally and that kind of thing. But I do find that it's got an addictive, it's got an addictive component, you know. So if you're taking it, you know, if you get really into it on a daily basis, it's probably good to have a month off every now and again, even if you're working with it energetically, you know, that would be my advice. Okay, guys, feel free to leave any questions or comments in the, uh, in the comment, in, in the comment stream underneath. Uh, this is me, Devaraj. I'll be back soon. The other substances, I might cover one on... I don't think I'm going to do Iboga, which I was also quite into for a while. It's quite heavy psychoactive, but I will do something on cacao because that's a legal substance that you can take uh, the principal active ingredient of chocolate. And that can also be quite useful in a therapeutic context, uh, working with the body or working with the mind. So I'll do a video on that at some point. Anyway, this has been my video on tobacco. I hope you've enjoyed it. 
feel free to like and subscribe and all that stuff. And I'll see you back with more bioenergetics and therapy information soon. Bye for now. And keep remembering, you can do it.